Hello everyone, welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books and a very special video. Now over the years I'm sure you've heard me talk a lot about the International Booker Prize and how special and important it is to so many people around the world but also to me. The International Booker Prize is an annual prize celebrating the best books translated into English and published in the UK or Ireland. It platforms books from all around the world, originating and being translated from a range of different languages. The books are always thought-provoking, diverse, extraordinary literary achievements. And so, today I'm very, very excited to get to share two things, the second of which will be a kind of more personal announcement, but firstly, the most exciting thing of all, this is the International Booker Prize Longlist for 2024, the Booker Dozen. It is an absolute privilege to get to tell you about them and to be one of the first to share this. I, for one, cannot wait to sink my teeth into these. So without further ado, let's talk about these books. In no particular order, aside from this is the order in which I pulled them out of the box, this is the longlist for the International Booker Prize 2024, starting with Jenny Erpenbeck with Kairos. This has been translated from the German by Michael Hoffman, and it's a story of love and betrayal set in Berlin during the years before and after the fall of the Berlin Wall. In this granular and at times shockingly intimate narrative of an all-consuming love affair that ultimately turns abusive, Jenny Erpenbeck has written an allegory of her nation, a country that has ceased to exist, East Germany. The ending is like a bomb thrown into your room. You'll be reeling for days and weeks to come. Wow. Next up, we have A Dictator Calls by Ismail Karare, and this is translated from the Albanian by John Hodgson. A fascinating exploration of the relationship between writers and tyranny. In June 1934, Joseph Stalin allegedly telephoned the famous novelist and poet Boris Pasternak. He wanted to discuss the arrest of a fellow Soviet poet. And in this fascinating combination of dreams and dossier facts, Ismail Karare reconstructs the three minutes they spoke and the aftershocks of this tense, mysterious moment in modern history. I think the biggest challenge is going to be deciding which of these books to read first. And making that decision even harder is Lost on Me by Veronica Ramos. This was translated from the Italian by Lea Ginesco, and it's described like this. Narrated in a voice as wryly ironic as it is warm and affectionate, Lost on Me seductively explores the slippery relationship between deceitfulness and creativity, beginning with Veronica's first artistic achievement, a painting she steals from a school classmate and successfully passes off as her own. Deceptively simple, its tenderness offset by moments of cool brutality, Lost on Me is a masterwork of human observation. Next on the long list we have Crooked Plough. This is by Itamar Vieira Jr. and translated from the Portuguese by Johnny Lorenz, a leading voice among the black authors who have joined Brazil's literary establishment in recent years with imaginative and searing works that have found commercial success and critical acclaim. Two sisters find a mysterious knife beneath their grandmother's bed. Momentarily mystified by its power, they decide to taste its metal. The shuddering violence that follows marks their lives and binds them together forever. <sighs> okay, that sounds fascinating. Next up, we have Mater 210. This is by Huang Sok Yong and translated by Sora Kim Russell and Yong Jae Josephine Bay. And this is actually not Huang Sok Yong's first rodeo. He's been nominated for the International Booker Prize before for his book At Dusk. And this one is an epic tale that threads together a century of Korean history set in contemporary Seoul. A laid off worker stages a months long sit in atop a 16 story factory chimney. During the long and lonely nights, he talks to his ancestors, chewing on the meaning of life, on wisdom, passed down the generations. This book vividly portrays the struggles of the ordinary Korean, starting in the Japanese colonial era, continuing through liberation, and right up to the 21st century. I think this is going to be an epic tale, and I can't wait to read it. Continuing on, we have Domenico Starnan with The House on Via Gemito, and this was translated from the Italian by Una Stransky. One of Italy's most accomplished novelists, this book is described as a masterpiece. Narrated against the vivid backdrop of Naples in the 1960s, this book has established itself as a masterpiece of contemporary Italian literature. A modest apartment smelling of paint and turpentine, its furniture pushed up against the wall to create a makeshift studio, drying canvases move from bed to floor each night. The father, a railway clerk, is convinced that he possesses great artistic promise. If it weren't for the family, he must feed, and the jealousy of his fellow Neapolitan artists 
nothing would stop him from becoming a world famous painter. Ambitious and frustrated, genuinely talented, but also arrogant and resentful, he is scarred by constant disappointment. He is a larger than life character, a liar, a fabulist, and his fantasies shape the lives of those around him, especially his young son. His son will spend a lifetime trying to get out from under his father's shadow. Incredible. Next up is this book. This is Not a River by Selva Almada, and this is translated from the Spanish by Annie McDermott. Three men go out fishing, returning to a favourite spot on the river despite their memories of a terrible accident three years earlier. As a long, sultry day passes, they drink and cook and talk and dance, and try to overcome the ghosts of their past. But they are outsiders, and this intimate, peculiar moment also puts them at odds with the inhabitants of this watery universe. The forest presses close, and violence seems inevitable, but can another tragedy be avoided. Our next long-listed book is Sympatia by Rodrigo Blanco Calderon, and this is translated by Noel Hernandez Gonzalez and Daniel Hahn. When Ulysses Khan's wife leaves and moves abroad without him, her father befriends him, and when the father-in-law dies, Ulysses finds he has been bequeathed the bizarre task of turning the family mansion into a shelter for dogs. The untranslatable word Sympatia, which is the title, an intermingling of sympathy and charm, captures the kinship of stragglers and strays in the cleared out city. In this book we find humour and humanity in our monstrous present. These all sound so good. Next up we have White Knights. These are short stories by Ursula Honeck and translated by Kate Webster, and that is translated from the Polish. White Knights, the debut short story collection from poet Ursula Honeck, is a series of interconnected stories concerning the various tragedies and misfortunes that befall a group of people who all grew up and lived in the same village in a region in southern Poland. Each story centres itself around a different character and how it is that they manage to cope, survive, or merely exist, despite, and often in ignorance of, the poverty, disappointment, tragedy, despair, brutality, and general sense of futility that surrounds them." Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm really struggling with which one I'm going to pick up first. Next up, we have The Silver Bone by Andrei Kurkov. He is a Ukrainian writer. This was translated from the Russian by Boris Streluk. It's in Kiev in 1919, and the Soviets control the city, but white armies menace them from the West. No man trusts his neighbour, and any spark of resistance may ignite into an open rebellion. An off-kilter, distinctly Kurkovian take on the historical mystery genre, The Silver Bone takes inspiration from the real-life archives of crime enforcement agencies in Kiev, offering a propulsive narrative that bursts to life with rich historical detail. It's described as rich and compulsive, original and intriguing. Wow. Next up we have Undiscovered by Gabriela Bina, translated from the Spanish by Julia Sanchez. Undiscovered captivated me, powerful and searing, this novel snaps, bucks, heals, and snaps again. So we start off the novel in an ethnographic museum in Paris. This book blends personal, historical, and fictional writing. Undiscovered tells of a search for identity beyond the old stories of patriarchs and plunder. Subversive, intimate, and fiercely irreverent, it builds on a powerful call for decolonization. She traces a legacy of abandonment, jealousy, and colonial violence, in turn reframing her own struggles with desire, love, and race. And that is Undiscovered. And I'm very grateful that so many of us are about to discover this book thanks to the International Booker Prize. The twelfth book that I'm very excited to share with you is The Details. This is by Aya Genberg and translated from the Swedish by Kira Josephson. A famous broadcaster writes a forgotten love letter. A friend abruptly disappears. A lover leaves something unexpected behind. A traumatised woman is consumed by her own anxiety. Who is the real subject of a portrait? The person being painted, or the one holding the brush? The Details is a novel built around four such portraits, unveiling the fragments of memory and experience that make up a life. In exhilarating, provocative prose, Aya Genberg reveals an intimate and powerful celebration of what it means to be human. Okay. And rounding off the list of books long listed for the International Booker Prize 2024, last but by no means least, this is what I'd rather not think about. This is by Jenta Postuma and translated from the Dutch by Sarah Timmer Harvey. On the back it says, by my 27th birthday I owned 142 sweaters and it was high time I saw a therapist. What if one half of a pair of twins no longer wants to live? What if the other can't live without them. 
These questions lie at the heart of this book. The narrator is a twin whose brother has recently taken his own life. She looks back on their childhood and tells of their adult lives, and of how her brother tried to find happiness. In brief, precise vignettes, full of surprising humour and gentle melancholy, Posthuma tells the story of a depressive brother viewed from the perspective of a sister who both loves and resents her twin, struggles to understand him, and misses him terribly. And that is our International Booker Prize 2024 long list. That is an impressive set of books. Please let me know which one you are going to be starting with. I honestly don't even know. I think that maybe White Knight might be my first read. A Dictator Calls, The Silver Bone, Undiscovered. These all sound like amazing books that I cannot wait to read. I honestly don't even know where I want to begin. I want all of these in my brain immediately. And the exciting personal news that I wanted to share is that the Booker Prize have very kindly asked me back to be the host of the official International Booker Prize live stream, which is just the biggest thrill of my entire life. Like, it was such a career highlight getting to host the Booker Prize live stream last year, and to be asked back to be involved in the International Booker Prize this year is such an honor. I will never stop pinching myself about how amazing that is. I'm so grateful to Gabby and the Booker Prize Foundation for trusting me with this role. It means everything to me, as you know. I take it very, very seriously, so I will be reading all of these books. I'm gonna get started immediately. A massive thank you, of course, to the Booker Prize, but also to you guys for making this dream of mine come true. It's thanks to your support in general, but also especially when I hosted the Booker Prize live stream back in November. Your support really, really goes a long way, so I can't thank you enough, and I cannot wait to get involved in the conversation about all of these books, interview the authors, and bring you a really exciting show on the 21st of May when we announce the winner of the International Booker Prize 2024. Another date for your diary is the 9th of April where we'll be announcing the shortlist and some of these books will be going through to the next round of judging. And if you too are setting yourself the challenge of reading as many of these as possible this year, I would highly recommend the reading challenge that's gonna be happening over on thebookerprizes.com. There will be extracts from the novels, interviews with the authors and the translators. There'll be reading guides, so many helpful pieces of information to kind of guide you along the way. And let's all continue the conversation online. A huge congratulations to all of the talented authors and translators who have been longlisted this year. This is such a huge achievement and I'm so excited that the International Booker Prize is celebrating these authors. So thank you so so much for watching, thank you to the Booker Prize of course, and I will see you for our next update on April the 9th. Okay, all the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day, thank you for everything, I love ya, goodbye!